Hello everyone and welcome to Time Traveler's Coin Exchange. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at 50 of uh, 1991D Lincoln Memorial cents. They're in the, their mint cellos um, and they've been cut from uh, mint sets. And so this is, a, I'll show you one here. And so basically uh, we have a bag of 50 of them here. Uh, we got these off of eBay from a seller from New York. A uh, pretty large, uh, pretty large seller. Welcome Coin Collecting with Tyler. How are you doing tonight? Let's pull these out of the bag and get them ready. Uh, but uh, pretty much on this channel, we look at a lot of higher graded coins. Uh, often, you know, a lot of my short videos are very high grade coins. Uh, and so you know, it's possible to find your own high-grade coins. Uh, there's numerous places you can find them. You can find them in your pocket change, but they've probably been damaged. Uh, you can find them from like a new bank mint roll. Um, you can find them in these mint sets here, or you can find them in like a bank bag. Um, you know, the bank bags, they're going to have a lot of little, you know, they're going to have more contact with other coins. Uh, once in rolls, uh, oftentimes, you know, when they get rolled, they're going to have more contact with other coins. Uh, so what I've found for the most part is these mint sets. Uh, they often have coins kind of, you know, from about 40, 43, or I'm sorry, 63 to 65. Um, and just depending on your luck, you can get higher ones. You can get 66, 67, 68. Um, for some years, it's even possible to get a 69. Um, and so pretty much what we're doing is we're just kind of giving, taking a sample, uh, looking through these. Um, I went through 1991P last night, and uh, we'll look through a couple more from the 90s later on in the week, and just try to get a feel for, you know, what the coins look like, what you can kind of expect for that year. Um, and so these are usually available on eBay. Uh, from various sellers, uh, but the whole idea here is in the future I want to be doing lots of coin grading, and uh, the more uh, the more sellers I kind of test out, uh, the the better idea I'll have of where I can get them. Because oftentimes people are more interested in the quarters and half dollars and uh, different coins from the mint sets, and they simply cut the cut the cents out. One cent pieces happen to be my favorite. Uh, so um, I'll buy them. Oftentimes people will be selling these in stacks of 50 or just, you know, various amounts. Um, and then I can take a look at them. Uh, for the most part, I'm not doing bulk grading yet, but that is in the plan. So I'm not cherry picking any of these rolls. Every coin um, in the roll is going to stay in the roll. Uh, I'm just going to relist this up on eBay when I'm done for now. Uh, but what I am doing is just kind of, you know, getting training my eye. You know, I'm used to looking at, you know, MS66 and 67 for the most part. And so um, I just want to see, you know, what the quality is like for this year and date. Or this uh, date and mint. Uh, so I can get an idea. Um, so this one here, you can see a little bit of environmental damage inside. You know, this is a 29-year-old coin now. So, you know, that kind of you know, can happen. You know, some of these by the time they're 29 years old, I mean, it's basically vintage, believe it or not. Um, hello, coin collecting with Tyler. Nice, you're doing, uh, guess the date. Nice, is it, a, is it a coin in a bag or how's it work? Tell me about your game, Tyler. That sounds like a fun game. I have a coin in a bag. You guess the date. You win it. Tell me more, Tyler. Some of these, at least from the Philadelphia Mint yesterday, there was just seemed like a little bit of dark debris in them. And so I'd keep thinking that there was a spot on the coin, uh, but it would be uh, just on the top of the mint cello. Maybe the next time I go through one of these, I will just brush off every coin so I'm not doing it as we look at it. 
It sounds like Tyler here has a new game with Pablo Bloom. That name sounds awful familiar. You've been making a lot of friends, friend. That is good. Have you gotten to 500 subscribers? You were saying, I think, last night that you were getting pretty darn close. Is that debris I was talking about? So it's like, I'm imagining most of these are like, I don't know, in older bulls, I would feel like they would mostly be like MS 63s and 64s. Most of these seem like they're 64s and 65s to me tonight. The game is like a pull out a random wheat penny and the viewers in the chat get one guess for the date. You have to get a spot on guess. You have one hour for the winner. Nice. And what do they get to keep? Do they get to keep the penny if, if you pull it out? Or is there, what, what's the prize? Tell us the prize, Tyler. We want to know. Tell us the prize. Forget about these 90, 1991 Ds. We want to know the prize. This one looks like it might. I don't think that's environment. I think that's actually where the coin, it's like it's more of a, like a older die and that's the zinc showing through. Or it's both. It's the zinc showing through due to environmental damage. But it's not necessarily what you want. I've actually gotten quite a few uh, MS67 coins. Not quite that bad, but where like it's just punched right through the copper. And I would have thought that it would have affected the strike or the something. Maybe it was a perfect coin other than that, but I'm always surprised. This one has really nice surfaces. See a tiny little scratch. They get a 1930s, 1938s silver circuit, silver mercury dime, and a 1903 Indian head Awesome. Were those um, were the those uh those dates sound familiar? Was that uh, the June 5th? That must be Friday. I I think I can be there Friday. Sure, I'd be happy to. And if it's not me, my clone will be there Friday. One of us or both of us. We're working together. I'm trying to remember the name of your friend. Were those from the mail call? I feel like I remember a Mercury Dime, at least a Mercury Dime in the mail call. That sounded like it was that one. That was a nice mail call for him to send you. I don't know, this one here looks pretty good. Is that a mark above the end? Yes, there is a couple, okay. Sometimes I miss it. That's why I like to flip it over a couple times sometimes if I'm seeing something. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna need to like clean these up. I mean, the positive part about it is all these, all the little black stuff almost all the time is just on top of this batch and they're not like actually something inside the coin that's compromised it. We have some lurkers in here. I always have lurkers in here. It's uh, lurkers are welcome. Quite a few of my friends just like to watch and uh, they're just, you know, just enjoy, just enjoy the chillness. Some people like to watch it just to like, I don't know, they say that my voice is kind of calm. It helps them sleep and so I'm totally down with that. I visited quite a few channels where it's just like ASMR and you just, uh, you know, just something for the brain to concentrate on as it like kind of like tries to relax or tries to fall asleep. Um, I don't like I don't need a mod at the moment, my friend. When stuff gets crazy, I will call on you. Uh, if I was doing, you know, maybe 
maybe I could make you a mod for when I'm doing non eBay, uh, non eBay ones. But uh, pretty much in the past, uh, when I was doing stuff, it only turned into trouble when I had mods. It's nothing against you, um, nothing against the other people that were doing it right. Um, it's just for me, it's way easier uh, when I have control over the stream. Um, I'm very glad you are gaining people's trust. That is a good thing. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, if I was to have a mod, it would be pretty much somebody that I knew in real life, probably, that, like, I could talk to about things, and if there was a problem, you know, be able to, like, talk face-to-face. -face. Um, it's just, it's hard not knowing somebody in person. Um, and the, the thing, it's, it's, half of it is because when someone, when someone else is modding, they can t take actions on a stream uh, that can have a direct impact on the stream's future. Um, yet the person who's modding, they don't have an investment. You know, like with, with this channel, like I just finished over 4,000 videos this last weekend. Um, you know, I've put a lot of work into the channel, but I'm happy to tell people that they should check out Coin Collecting with Tyler and that they should check out your channel. I'm more than happy to do that. I'm more than happy to support the other people who are making videos and have channels uh, here on YouTube um, because I really sincerely think that we all bring something to YouTube and to the Coin Collecting community. Kind of looks, I don't know, it doesn't have any major marks. Just a couple little ones. It's interesting, these mint cellos almost, like the older mint cellos, they almost seem like they make the coins look worse than they are. Uh, but these mint cellos, they almost feel like they like kind of like hide some of the more minor scratches. It's like they make them look nicer. When I buy from like a larger seller like this, the opinion I always want to have is that they they have you know kind of cherry picked them. They've taken the best of the best out and gotten those graded like anything MS67 or better has been removed. Anything questionable being a 67, maybe those are the ones that they leave in there. Um, you know, but from pretty much like anything 1990 forward, um, I feel like they they should they should have been kind of cherry picked by now. Um, it's just, you know, whether, you know, it's whether they've been like, kind of like going from dealer to dealer to dealer, um, or if somebody's just like cut up a bunch of fresh sets, sometimes people just sell them off because they need to, you know, just get that little bit of extra money, uh, to get the next thing they want. Um, you know, most people specialize. I feel like not many people have the capital to buy, buy into every single category. Kind of some that looks kind of like it's on the surface of the coin there. Kind of like interesting little ripples, almost like there was. Ooh, what's going on up there? Yeah, it's like almost like the. Um, well, it's pretty much the. It's like it was too thin in that area, and I think that is the sink just like kind of starting to rot through. Hopefully it is not indicative of the batch. I feel like we've we've seen one or two where it looked like the strike went right through. What uh have you made any other videos this week, Tyler? Um, I don't think I have seen. I don't think I've seen any upload, but it's. I feel like I haven't been getting um, notifications for almost any channels. Uh, it's been kind of interesting. It also seems like the main YouTube uh, page, it feels much more specialized. Like they have um, specialized things. Okay, I was like that. I don't remember that part being next to the bow tie. It's gone. It was like a little crimped hair. Um, it seems like they specialized the homepage to like just 
instead of showing you who's on and what's on, just like who are the who are the people that you've watched the most recently. Um, like I even had a hard time finding my channel today with the video coming on. I think because I had been watching some other channels. It seems to like, you know, it's kind of like you turn on your TV and it's like this is where what you were watching last. You should watch it again. <laughs> like maybe. But maybe I want to watch something else tonight. But I'm going to need to fix my Instagram because it's like filling up the entire screen on the computer. Like people just keep liking the Instagram account. And it's funny because I just take a picture of the coin because uh, it won't let me post videos from the computer. Maybe they need to be shorter. I'm not sure what the deal is. Uh, but I, I'm able to like post pictures from the computer now. Uh, for the Instagram account. I guess I could like just use my phone and make videos for but people seem to like like the Instagram seems to be the fastest growing one. I just like put stuff there. I don't try to like meet people. I don't try to do anything. It's just people seem to keep liking the Instagram photos of the coins, which is cool. And like I put the like link to my YouTube video and I put the link to that item on eBay. And um no, it's been very interesting. It's almost like, wow, I should just do Instagram. <laughs> but I started the like all the different, actually my Reddit that I started, for some reason it's not letting me post there. I posted like 150 things and now like when I hit post, nothing happens. It's been that way since the beginning of the weekend. I don't know if Reddit's having trouble um, or what, but so at the moment I'm doing like Tumblr and Pinterest and Instagram and Twitter and Blogger and uh, mix and so it's been kind of interesting but I would say like Twitter and Instagram they seem to have the most activity I frankly don't even know how mix is supposed to help but when I was checking things out those were like the major ones uh, that seemed like people used um, but mix seems like it's more of like a news a news place but we will see. And I feel like Tumblr could be cool if people started discovering it or liking it. Uh, just because if people are, you know, looking at one coin video, maybe they bump into another coin video and maybe then they, you know, want to watch a bunch more. But I'd definitely say like Instagram and Twitter were worth adding to my social media accounts. Uh, when it was just me as a person, I didn't really see the need to own any of those. Um, but it seems like for a business, uh, it seems like it gives a business more exposure. And so if you guys have businesses, I definitely recommend adding an Instagram and a Twitter. Uh, it's not very hard. Um, it takes a little bit extra time. It takes me longer to post every listing now because I'm adding it to all the different social medias, but at the same time, it seems like, you know, my views on here are come, going higher, uh, my sales on eBay are going higher, uh, it just seems like, it seems like it helps. You know, it's like the more places you go, the more people that know your name. Got some interesting texture. There's like a small mark, it looks like in the middle bottom field. I know the textures on some of these copper covered sinks are kind of interesting, but I've seen really high grade coins with like really rippled surfaces, and it really doesn't seem to affect it. Um, almost looks like I think there's just little hairs on the flip. Maybe there's a couple little spots up at the top. I was going to say, this one looks really nice. Yeah, I think those are on the flip. That's too bad. This one really looked great. And I don't know what those spots would do to it, like grade-wise. Um, but otherwise, like this one, it's like, see, it's like you have a, you know, this is kind of a coin that, I, you know, I would give an example of why it would be left in here. Uh, if someone had picked them all out, because it's a really nice coin, you know, it's a coin you'd want to get graded, but then it has these little spots on it. And um, that's not something I would want to be sending in, because if it's got little spots now, 
what are those little spots going to look like next week, next month, next year? Um, are they just going to get bigger? Um, chances are, if it went from you know a shiny coin like this to one with little tiny spots. Hey, Square Coin Talk, welcome. Hello, Make America Great Again, welcome. Right? Oh boy. Is there writing? Yeah, I bet there is in this world. Yeah, I definitely watched some news. It was definitely pretty intense. So, yeah, this should this should hopefully be more common for you guys. Look into the light. But it seems like we've we found a couple of pretty nice looking ones. Uh, these are this is a new batch. Um, I got these ones uh, from uh, eBay around New York. They have like a huge amount of feedback. Um, I can't really say uh, eBay username simply because after I make this video for this stream, I'm posting this back up and I'm linking the video and um, you're allowed to link the videos to your thing, but you can't mention, you can't plug other e eBayers, but I can say they're from New York and they have a huge amount of feedback. Um, I bought about 10 rolls off of them. Um, and uh, just trying to sample it out, see what their wares are like. And uh, that way, in the future, when I do start grading coins and doing bulk submissions, I'll kind of know where the best people are uh, to get bulk coins from. Yeah, a lot of these ones look pretty good. A lot of the mint cellos that I buy, they all look like 63, 64s. Um, these ones, you know, these ones look like they're mainly 64 to 65 with quite a few 66s um, and maybe one or two 67s. But every time I think one is maybe a 67, then it's like I notice, you know, oh, there's a little bit of spotting on the rim. There's just, you know, the coin is nice and bright and beautiful. Uh, but then it's like, oh, OK, I see. Or, oh, I don't know what that does. like. I'm still, you know, I'm not a professional grader. I'm going to be gearing up to, to grade just because I've been looking at so many graded coins for so long making these videos um, that I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, but then it's funny too because, like, I'll find a nice coin that has zero marks on it, but then it's like, I'll be like, oh, this one's really nice, but then it's like, I notice the strike isn't really that great, or just, you know, something else about the coin's appearance. This one's got a couple little spots, a little bit of environmental. You know, these are vintage, but uh, I don't think we're going to see any toned coins in here. Um, I'm mainly just trying to get a feel for what the 90s look like. I looked at a lot of mint cellos from the 60s through the 80s. And uh, I didn't, uh, I, I guess, I, I'm not sure why I didn't want to buy, like, I definitely buy high grade. Um, modern coins. Um, this one looks like it has pretty nice fields. There's maybe, there's a mark above the date. There's another mark above that one. So two pretty minor darks. It looks like there's something in the middle of the field there. So about like three noteworthy marks on the coin. I know, I'd still feel like it's maybe just a 65, but it's like a, they've got nice even fields. Like, I'm used to them being all scratchy or spotted or something. <laughs> I mean, in reality, 99.999% of coins have something wrong with them. You know, it's like, and a business strike, like how many, how many um, MS-70 business strikes are there? I mean, I think for the entire 60s, there's only two MS-68 coins. You know, supposedly there are six, but I have definitely identified that four of the six are not MS-68. They're actually proof 68s, and they've been mislabeled and are skewing the population. And I, I want to find and see the other two MS-68s and see if they are the same. Actually, that's what I'm going to do do later. I'm going to see if I can find the other two MS-68s that PCGS has graded. I, I just I, I just find it curious that I've I've seen, I've held in hand two of the six, 
and I know the serial numbers for the two of the other ones. And so I know that the four 1969 S's that were graded MS68 red, they're all proof 68 red coins. So someone made a mistake and it's messing up the population reports. Um, so I'm definitely curious about that. But if you guys ever see an MS67 red, um, a 1969 S MS67 red um, for like under $400, buy it because the populate or the uh, price guide is messed up because it thinks that there's four MS68s and it like halved the price of the in state 67 when those ones were graded, but it was a grading error. Um, so Anybody watching this, if you guys ever see an MS67 red 1969 S, they're worth a whole lot more money than the price guide says. And eventually in the future, it's going to get all worked out. Someone's going to make a bunch of money. But I think there's only 17 of them out there. Um, so good luck finding them. So yeah, I'm curious about how many other coins just like that. I mean, I can't imagine that PCGS is like messing up too often. You know, like I thought that was really interesting to figure out. Like at first it was just a theory. Like I had, I w had one coin in my hand and I was talking with Andrew just about like, you know, the worst grading, the worst errors we've ever seen. Um, like in a PCGS lab and normally it's like labeled a D or an S or it's just you know not even the coin in the holder and I was like check out this coin it's a dangerous coin you know this coin would be worth like five thousand dollars if it was real but it's a proof it's not a mint state coin and uh, so he was like oh what, is that for sale and I'm like yeah and he like goes over to eBay he's like I just bought it He's like, I think it's real. And so I was mailing it out to him and then I had ordered a second from the same person that I had ordered a Proof 68 Red from. And so I pop the one in the mail and then I pick up my mail for the day. And when I get home and open it, it's another MS 68 Red. And this serial number is sequential to the other one. And so I'm like, what? Um, and then I looked up the, the other two and they were, the, their numbers all came up so they're all four MS68 reds were like done together at the same time, same batch. You know, someone from the Jefferson Nickel department didn't have his coffee and was covering for a Lincoln memor Memorial person. And uh, whoops, whoopsie, whoopsie. But yeah, I want to see, there's two other coins from what it looked like that have been graded MS68 red in the 60s. Um, and I need to look them up and find them. And I want to see if I can find a picture or just, you know, any sales records. Because that was interesting, too, about the MS68 Reds was PCGS didn't have, you know, when I entered the cert or looked at the um, price guide, it, you know, it showed four in the population. But you go to the price guide and it doesn't have a price there just for MS67. And so when I ask people about it, they're like, oh, it's because the coins never sold at auction before. So, that, you know, they haven't made a price for the coin. It's too rare. You know, it hasn't had a public appearance. You know, it needs a history to gain a value. Hello, coin collecting with Tyler. Welcome back. Um, and so I want to I want to go check out the other two and see what their their prices and see if I can find any history because you know, if they have sold at a big auction, then I think that's probably pretty, pretty serious that they are uh, real. Uh, but if they haven't, like, I think there was a reason that the other four did never go up to auction because I think people saw it and knew what they were. Uh, but for right now, the MS68 Red is looking pretty nice in my, in my PCGS <laughs> registry because, um, it makes it look like I have an MS68 red because the cert works. Um, hope that's okay with everyone else. Hey, Logan, welcome. Welcome, welcome. A good coin scope. Um, 
I mean, I use this one here that I use. It's a Dino Light Premier. Uh, this one is over 10 years old. Um, and so I imagine, like this one cost me $120 10 years ago. And I almost want to say it's like an AM right here. I think if I look at the Dino Capture, well, it says Dino Capture 2.0, but that's the Dino Light Premier. have any other I'll have to change it um, but um, this one's worked really good uh, you can make you can take pictures you can make videos you can stream it um, it's really easy to work with it has a dual focal uh, it's got an LED light that you can turn on and off I would say if you are looking for a camera definitely make sure you can turn it on and off that is like super 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 important um, because if you can't turn on off the LED light and you're zoomed in, um, it can get crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, my registry set, uh, they're all public. Um, you know, there's people with much higher ones. Everything's under time travel or coin exchange. Uh, almost all my sets are under time travel or coin exchange. Um, and uh, I have most of them updated, but... Uh, there's definitely people with better ones because every time I add like a nice new coin to it, it, it's up for sale on eBay. All my coins in my registry set are for sale on eBay. So um, basically, you know, people will check my registry set uh, against theirs and they'll just buy out my better coins. And so I keep having to update my registry set. Pretty much just every time I get a brand new coin for my registry set, it the coin sells. Um, but I have quite a few that are like within the top 10. If it's under, yeah, I w well, that's the thing. This is 10 years ago. There should be um, a dino light now that's, you know, there should be one that's even better than this. Like, you know, that's like 4K or something like that. It's like, in 10 years, the price should have dropped and the quality should have gone up. And uh, on the other side, you could probably buy a used one, you know, that somebody doesn't use anymore for way, way cheaper. Um, all you would basically, like the, the Dino Light, like it just USBs into the computer. Um, my new computer didn't have a CD-ROM to run the software and it was plug and play on Windows 10. Um, let me see something real quick. Yeah, I don't even know which one. I was going to say, let me bring up my best set, but I don't know which one would even be the best set. US cents complete circulation. Let's see if I can copy paste this for you guys. I've never tried this, so give me one second. Sure does take a while to bring it up. Check out this scope, search on Amazon, but throw plug able USB to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is like when I bought this 10 years ago, the technology was like pretty good. Um, but now it's like there should be like 100 companies that do the exact same thing. Oh, it looks like PCGS may be down because I'm waiting for a response and it's not. Oh, wait, wait, wait. just gonna get back to this. Um, I believe when I was like I was just searching the name of my channel Time Traveler Coin Exchange the other day and I believe the registry sets were coming up. Um, like all my all my registry sets are open. Do 
do know which one to use. I mean, all the dino lights, I think uh, Chocolate Copper Coins, I think he has a, um, a dino light and I think he has an AM scope. I think that's what it's called. I've never used an AM scope, uh, but I believe him and who's the big guy at Coin Up? Um, why am I spacing his name? Robert, I think he uses, I think he uses one, like I think, but I think his is like, I think I like heard a quote or something of like $4,000 for like the camera and the setup and everything. And I was like, whoa. But at the same time, I think, I think with what he does with coins, it's, it's worth the investment. I mean, it would be worth the investment for me to get a better camera, let alone a lighting system. I have a question for you guys all, since I got a couple of you guys in here. Um, you know, I think you guys can see the, the column or the space next to Lincoln there, you know, on the sides, there's like extra columns. Um, I feel like I've seen some people talking about double dies where there's like an extra column. Um, but it's like, I'm definitely seeing a lot of coins like yesterday in the 1991s, there was columns and the 1960 proofs I was looking at, there were columns like inside the columns, just like, you know, like. And I'm like, is that just like machine doubling or is it like a double die? It just, it drives me crazy. Like I was trying to Google, trying to find uh, DDRs with it, you know, trying to find other coins that had that same, same error that had been confirmed. All I know is that uh, for the versatility of the dinoscope, uh, I do like it. Um, be kind of hard for me to show you guys, but I mean, it's basically just, you know, like a, it's like a three inch long, like bullet with a cord coming out of it. And uh, you just buy a little flexible stand. Um, you know, I see different kinds of uh, stands. Mine just has a long flexible neck uh, that I can kind of bend into place. Um, the one thing I don't like about the flexible neck is when you position it, it kind of like moves a little bit, you know, just to memory. And so sometimes you have to adjust it a couple times to get it uh, at the place you like. Um, but, you know, they're the ones that like it just goes, you know, straight up and down, you know, kind of like, kind of like it, it, you can kind of bring it up and down. But I found a lot of those, they don't really swivel around. It's just moving at a height. Um, and so there are a bunch of different kinds of stands. Um, I use an Ot light, which is like a true light source. Um, and it's supposed to make it so that the coin is actually the color of, you know, depending on what kind of light you use, it'll change the colors. Um, and it's interesting too, like a lot of, um, cell phones, even like the, the cameras are getting good enough. You know, you could probably take a photo like this on a cell phone um so it's really getting better and they have like little magnification things you can like put over the lenses um but you know without the software but it's amazing how much better the technology is getting So I feel like I've been really happy with uh, these mint silos. Whoa, check out the roughness. Like that is a rough rim. That's like the like one of the roughest rims, and this is like in a mint set. Like that's something you might find on the pavement outside a supermarket. I felt like the surface on the coin looked weird too in the beginning, but. Like you can see like a little bit of zinc coming through the rim. Oh, the reverse is rough too. What a rough planchet. Look at that T. That looks like so doubled, but it's what, it's just machine damage. Look at the N. I'm going to have to zoom in. Look at the C. Jesus. Sorry, guys. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at that one after that. It's, I think it's just, I think like it's almost like the planchette was like the wrong size or something like the rim on that thing was huge. I know, you guys are welcome to check to see if there's a 1991 DD, 1991 DDR. Yeah, look at this one. There's none of that going on on this one. Well, that'd be cool if we find a cool DDR on here. I'm guessing, it's like every time I think I find something cool, it's machine damage. It's like half the, I swear, I'm gonna like find like a really nice double die and I'm just gonna totally write it off as machine damage. I'll be like, look how bad that machine damage is. It looks like, it looks awesome, but it's not. But I think before that coin popped up with that craziness, I think I was going to say I was really impressed uh, with the quality of these. I mean, there has been a little bit of debris I've had to wipe off of the stuff, but I know stuff happens and these things just, you know, static cling just kind of like happens. I think I will definitely, definitely zoom in on that back there. It's interesting, it kind of looks like a mark, but I think it's like a die scratch right behind Lincoln, because I feel like that would gouge into the shoulder, and so I feel like it's raised. Yeah, the more coins that I look like that, look at that have nothing to do. What was the date that's in the set? That's an, oh, it's a 1969S, but what was the date that's in the set? If you're just trying to find a, find the MS68 red one, uh, looking at the, the PCGS, a population report and the PCGS price guide. Well, I would say like the, um, I would say a scope is a good investment if you'll be doing anything with it. I mean, it like, you know, like, if you're gonna look at coins and use it for your coins, it's a good investment. Like I'd say it's way better than a loop. Um, it just, it's much more, I don't know, how do you say, ergonomic? It's way, like I can look at, you know, a few hours worth of coins and my neck and everything feels fine. Well, if I'm using a loop, and I'm like down like this, like trying to adjust to the light source and focal, um, it, it kind of, it's kind of rough after a while. It looks really nice. Oh, you just want to look at the coin. Um, if you want to look at the MS68 red, uh, you can type. You can type in YouTube um, mystery mystery of the mistaken mint state. Or if you go to my YouTube channel, you can. Uh, type in uh, MS68 red 1969 S um, and it should come up as a video um, and then I have the mistaken mystery of the mistaken mint state which is me talking basically about what I was talking about earlier um, but the whole time I'm showing you guys the coin in the video uh, this mint cello has something a little extra it's got a little tail scorpion tail. Ow! I don't think I've ever seen a little tail. Usually people cut a little extra. Um, but I've definitely, you know, the more people that looked at it, some people were like, oh no, I think that's real. Um, and uh, they were definitely they're like, you know, like one person, I had two of them. And before I had the second one, 
the first one already sold and then I was like did I just really sell that coin what if it is worth a bunch of money and uh, but then I got a second one the same day I put the other one in the mail so like I've held two of them I still have the other one it's not for sale because it's just gonna sit in my registry set because um, I'd rather have it than another proof 68 red um, because it comes up as an MS 68 red uh, in the registry uh, but I also don't want to sell it because that's just not I don't I don't I don't know it's a dangerous coin somebody could like sell it to someone and like make a few thousand dollars off of them and have the person not know that it wasn't it's just it's a dangerous coin so I'm gonna keep it safe safe in my registry set um, but there you know there are Andrew's got one of them because I sold him uh, one of the two and then there's two out there I know what the cert numbers are um, so they're they're out there somewhere somebody else um, I got two of them from the same person I ordered proof 68 reds and they delivered two MS 68 reds that were proof 68 reds uh, I was just like what am I gonna do with these I'm, I can't sell them like no one's gonna buy this this is an error but just odd coins 1991 deed. Alright, this one's got a little bit of kind of environmental damage. Little specks and like you can almost see it looks like inside. Maybe that's just on top. Yeah, that's on top. I was gonna say a lot of times when there's like a little bit of moisture and then like these cellos, especially the older ones, have been creased and cracked, you can kind of see where the moisture just kind of condensated and then like kind of all the I don't know, like, like it just like turns like darker where the metal juice was. I think this one's the last, but I'm definitely gonna zoom in on that last one. The extra, it looks like there's like an extra bar on the outside, but that's probably just machine damage as well. Here, what, we can take a look. We'll zoom in on that one. And we'll zoom in on the other one. I'm going to turn the light on first. Try zooming in here. So I believe it's just where the. So it's like we can zoom into focal lengths for some reason wasn't allowing me to a while ago so there you can see the zinc kind of busting through and we'll look at a normal T here let's take a look at the one that looked doubled okay yeah so I think the coin itself is fine it's just, you know, where it looked doubled, that is actually the zinc busting through. It's interesting how, how doubled it looked. Zoomed. But in reality, it's just I guess like the dye was just really hot. I don't know. It looked so doubled before, but you can see kind of why it looked doubled because there uh, basically everything has like this bustedness to it. It looked impressive until I zoomed in, huh? All right, I wanted to check out the rim here too. Oh wow, it goes all the way around. It's like there is a lot of zinc showing on this plane. Let's check out the rim on the front. Get to zoom out a little bit. That's on the front too. So I don't know, like I almost wonder It's so rough. It's like the, the rim is like falling apart. It's like I don't know if it's too big or too small, but like why everything, it's just like a really, really worn die.
You know, this, this thing probably has more zinc on it visible than any other coin. And these ones always really confuse me too. Like, I'll be looking under just a loop under like 30x or something. And like, you know, you'll see that like kind of dark shadow or where, you know, where the zinc is. And it like, it totally looks like another D. Um, but then it's like, I get it in, zoomed in like this, and it's like, oh, that's just, it's just like a zinc shadow. So. Hmm. So I think I'm, I've got quite a few more of these uh, bags of flips. I think the next one uh, that I'll be doing, I think, is a 1994 and a 1994D. Um, but I've got eight more of these rolls, uh, so I'll have quite a few more come in this week. And of course, I have more uh, episodes of The Coin Vault has opened. Because um, that's just, I don't think that's ever going to end. And honestly, I think I just need to start giving away most of the coins on the episodes or something like that. Because otherwise, I don't know, the whole point of looking through them all while I do the show is so that I could like sort them out and figure out what I'm doing with it. So I need to figure out what I'm doing with it. And instead of flipping coins for future episodes, like all the ones from the coin vault has opened, they've all been ones that I flipped in the past. Um, I'm thinking that maybe I'm just gonna get some gloves and like keep them raw uh, because sending like a roll of coins is a lot cheaper than sending 50 flipped coins. Like not only do, not only does it weigh more, um, but they take up, it's just a, you know, like, I don't have, right there. you know, you guys all know what a bankroll looks like, but it's like, you know, this is what, you know, like, I think this is probably like 75 flipped coins. It's like, you could like fit like eight rolls in there and it probably weighs just about as much. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out what I'm doing with those, but it's just, I have, I'm wanting to start to move all this stuff and figure it out. Um, because, you know, years and years ago when I was going through all these, I thought I would, you know, retire um, off of all these coins I pulled, uh, pulled out and flipped. And now I know, yeah, most of them are damaged. A lot of them are, um, you know, been cleaned. And there are a bunch of, like, errors, and there are a bunch of, like, you know, kind of lower-grade MS coins. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting. I, I need to like figure out what all the different errors are worth. You know, I've got like probably like 500 Liberty errors and like 500 skull cracks and um, a lot of RPMs and a lot of maybe RPMs. <laughs> um, so I need to figure out those. But uh, I think I'm gonna call it uh, for this video here since this video's main purpose was to make a video for uh, my eBay store for this role afterwards. Um, and maybe I'll have another roll coming up tonight, but uh, I think I'm going to catch some sleep because I've been burning the candle on both ends. But uh, thanks everyone for joining. I wish you guys awesome nights. And uh, my normal streams here are on uh, Wednesday and Saturday nights at 9 o'clock, uh, but pretty much I've been able to do a bonus stream almost every night of the week. Uh, so I hope to be able to do some bonus streams for you tomorrow and Tuesday as well. Um, I just, uh, I only guarantee Wednesday and Saturday so that I don't disappoint you guys. Sure, Logan, what's up? And I am meaning as well to, um, add some more, um, scavenger hunt prizes. Um, we're almost up to the point where I'm going to add another $10 prize and I'm going to start to add a bunch of coin prizes. And since nobody has found a scavenger hunt in the last week, I am probably going to give a hint here and I will post it uh, on the GAW video and then put a post in the community that there's been a hint. Um, but nobody's found it. I feel like I haven't even seen people really trying hard. Uh, yeah, the, the coins I separated, they're from... Some of them are from bank boxes because I went through... I used to go through about 50 bank boxes a week. Um, but then I went through about 5,000, 5,000 count unsearched bags of wheat pennies off eBay. Um, and just, I bought roll like, like 10, 20, 30,000 rolls of wheat pennies. And so these were the better coins for them rolls. 
Um, I kind of had a criteria where I was buying the cheapest of the cheap. I wasn't buying, you know, all the uncirculated rolls. Um, so probably if I had been buying higher quality coins, I probably would have been pulling out higher quality coins. But I was hoping to find key dates and I was hoping to find like, you know, the needle in the haystack. And after looking through all those, I never found any real uh, key date coins. I think 1924D was probably the best coin, you know, like rarest coin uh, from a wheat penny roll or a bag. Um, so I guess for, you know, now that people have, people have told me they found good coins and I did find some higher graded coins, um, you know, some nice old teens that were like, you know, gradable. Um, but like it didn't happen very often. And but yeah, most of these are separated from bank boxes and from, you know, just like wheat penny lots and stuff. Um, these, you know, these ones here for tonight, these were, you know, these were cut out of mint sets. So if you're looking for like high grade modern coins, you know, you can look for them in mint sets. Um, you can find groups like this from other people. Um, you can find high grade coins in uh, bank boxes if you know you're able to get a bank box of like solid date ones and you go through them, you know, you'll occasionally come across rolls with just lots of high grade coins in them. It's kind of still a needle in the haystack, but it's possible. Uh, it's very possible. Um, it's just, you know, you never, you never know where the concentration of really nice like first minted coins off a off a die are gonna come from, and uh, they just I think everything just goes in like big bins at the mint. And um, but I guess my recommendation for the most part, you know, like if you're just trying to fill a set and you're just a beginner, you know, like buy, buying bags and stuff like that's fine. It'll get you nine nine tenths of the way, and then you can fill in with some kind of low grade ones. Um, if you're trying to invest or have anything for the future, I, I kind of recommend buying the coins, buying higher graded versions of the coins. If you're not, if you're new to grading and don't feel confident in being able to tell a clean coin from like, you know, a nice untouched coin, I'd buy slabbed coins. Um, you know, when you buy a slabbed coin, they cost more usually than a raw one, but you can turn it over and sell it easier and get your money back. Uh, the key is just don't overpay, buy low, sell high. Um, two best things to do with a coin. Try to buy them low and try to buy them high. Or try to, try to sell them high. Um, but hope that helps everybody. Um, but I wish you guys a good night. I will be back uh, soon. I'll either have another one coming up here in a little bit. I just, I have to gauge myself. I, I literally got no sleep last night. Um, but um, I wanted to make some videos, so here I am. So if I'm able to, I'll be back, but I think I'm pro this is probably going to be a night. Um, but thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you guys in the future. And I wish you guys a great night.